modern recreation of the legendary 1973 Buchla Music Easel Monophonic Synthesizer with two oscillators, dual low-pass gates, a built-in five-step sequencer, and a real spring reverb, all in the convenient desktop format. This is the Buchla Easel Command. In the early days of synthesizer development, two dominant figures emerged, Bob Moog and Don Buchla. Both developers initially focused on building modular synthesizers. For Moog, it was the modules that would populate the company's System 55, 35, and 55 synthesizers, while Buchla was busy creating the dozens of modules comprised in the Buchla 200 series. In the early 1970s, Moog and Buchla distilled their complex systems into portable formats, the Moog MIDI Moog Model D and the Buchla Music Easel. In the synth world, you often hear folks refer to East Coast and West Coast synthesis, and primarily they're talking about Bob Moog's approach and those who modeled him, and Don Buchla's approach, respectively. Looking at the Model D and the Music Easel side by side, you can sort of grasp what the difference between the two schools is. Moog's approach is demonstrated with the Model D, focused on a relatively straightforward system of subtractive synthesis with a user-friendly interface that would be attractive to musicians from a traditional background. Now, Buchla, on the other hand, was not at all concerned with adhering to musical tradition. Whereas the Model D meant musicians where they were at, the Music Easel forced them to go to places they'd never been before. From the choice to equip the Music Easel with a touch-capacitive controller rather than a piano-style keybed, to the numerous and convoluted routing options, everything about Buchla's design urge musicians to step out of their comfort zones. Fifty years later, Don Buchla's designs are still confounding and delighting synthesis who have a taste for the uncommon. But as you heard in the demo, the Buchla Easel Command isn't all just bleeps and bloops. It's a rock-solid analog mono synth with a huge range of analog synth tones on tap. The Buchla Easel Command is an updated version of the original Music Easel, minus the touch-capacitive keyboard. On the rear panel, it includes a 3.5mm gate and 1 volt per octave jacks, Sustain input, traditional 5-pin and USB MIDI connections, and a true stereo master output. The Easel Command's interface reveals its modular nature, and each module is clearly labeled. They include the two oscillators, a complex and a modulation oscillator, a dual low-pass gate, a three-stage envelope generator with attack, sustain, and decay, a five-step sequential voltage generator, the pulser, and color-coded jacks for routing modules. The color coding is one of the most helpful aspects of this design. The color jacks correspond to the numerous control source outputs, and the black jacks are inputs. Blue jacks are for the sequencer. Orange jacks are for the envelope generator. Yellow jacks are for the pulser. And white jacks are for the random voltage generator. And then these purple jacks down here, those correspond to uh, pressure output for expressive controllers like the Buchla Thunder Overlay for the Sensil Morph. Now you patch between modules using Buchla's banana cables right here, or the shorting bars. So let's take a minute and break down each of the individual sections. So first up is the complex oscillator. And what's so complex about it? Well, you can choose from three different waveforms. Spike, a uniquely Buchla waveform that's like a really thin pulse wave. And the square wave. Super, super fat. And then there's also a triangle wave. It also has a sine wave if you turn the knob all the way to the left. And the sine wave is connected to a timbre control, which is a wave folder that completely alters the character of the wave, like this. Start dialing in the timbre. It gets super crazy and gnarly. It's awesome. What's more, you can mix the wave folded sign and one of the three standard wave shapes, like this. So you can already hear that this is a very different kind of synth right from the start. Now let's check out the modulation oscillator. Here you have three wave shapes to choose from. Ramp. Square wave. And triangle. And you can use the modulation oscillator as a second voice, like so. A little 
detune. Throw on the square. The output of the complex oscillator is hardwired to gate one, and the modulation oscillator is hardwired to gate two. Which brings us to the next section, the dual low-pass gate. The low-pass gate is one of the elements that sets the Buchla music easel and the easel command apart. What is a low-pass gate? Essentially, it's a voltage-controlled filter and a voltage-controlled amplifier in a single circuit. And it uses a Vactral, which is a combination of a light-dependent resistor and a light source, sort of similar to an optical compressor. In practical terms, this may be a little smoother. People will argue that Vactral-based amplifiers are more transparent and musical, but either way, it just sounds really nice. You can engage both the amplifier and the filter independently or combine them using this switch here. Now let's hear it with the resonance cranked up. Uh-oh, we've encountered another weird anomaly of the easel command. The low-pass gate is not resonant. Does that mean you can't create resonant sweeps and reso bass patches? Technically, yes, you can. But in my demo track, there's clearly some kind of resonant sweep happening on a couple of sounds. So how do you do it? One way is to send the envelope to the timbre control as well as to the gate. Let's check that out. So we're gonna connect one of the banana clips to the envelope out and put it into the black input jack which coordinates with the timbre control. We'll crank it up to about half. So now as we're playing, we can hear that we're getting sort of like a, a, a quasi-resonant filter effect uh, on everything we play, which is pretty awesome. And since we're talking about it, let's look a little bit deeper at the envelope generator. This is another area where the easel command diverges from other synths. I'm looking around for the ADSR. I see an A, uh, followed by an S, and then a D. And hey, where's the R? Well, you're on the West Coast now, friends, and release is implied. Now, the A, S, and D behave much like you think they would, but the envelope generator operates in three modes, sustained, transient, and self. Sustain holds a note as long as the key is depressed or a gate is held open. This is sort of the standard mode that I would play in. Transient moves right from the attack stage to the decay stage, no matter how long you hold down a key. So you can hear the decay getting longer. In order to do that, I had to move the slider. So it's almost acting like a release on a standard ADSR. And switching it into self mode turns it into a looping envelope, basically transforming it into a shapeable LFO. And we can change the rate, of course, by moving the decay slider. But perhaps the most perplexing thing about the envelope generator is that the sliders are reversed. So if you're starting from scratch, you want to begin with them all the way at the top. And that's pretty strange if you're used to something like the Arp Odyssey. But it's another one of those uniquely different details that makes working with the easel command a novel experience. Next up, let's talk about the pulser. What is the pulser? Well. It's a couple of things. It's the clock used to set the rate of the sequencer, and it's a sawtooth shaped modulation source that can be used like an LFO, which also goes into the audio range. You can trigger the pulser with the keyboard, set it to self-trigger to use it as a quasi-LFO, or trigger it with the sequencer, which is then being triggered by the pulser. The pulser has three modes. Sustain mode, which holds a voltage you've selected with the period slider. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna connect the output of the pulser to the input jack of gate one. So it's sort of behaving just like a basic envelope. Transient mode is like having an attack decay envelope with the period setting the decay time. And there's also an external mode, which is for use with the Buchla program cards, which honestly I didn't have a chance to check out, so I'm gonna ignore it. The Pulsar is a super fun modulator, uh, and let's route it to some stuff and see what happens. All right, so the way that I've hooked this up is I have my envelope going to both gate one and gate two, and then I've sent the Pulsar out to the input of the timbre control. 
So you can kind of hear here. We have this effect. Start turning up the timbre. Things get pretty weird. So as you can see, kind of using it in the same way I would be using an LFO, but uh, the, the possibilities for routing here are pretty limitless. So in this example, I took the output of the pulser and I've put it into the input of uh, gate two here. And by disengaging the keyboard, I can let this keep a steady drone, which I could change pitch then with the frequency slider. And then you can play on top of it. So, pretty fun. Some musical accompaniment with just the use of the pulser. All right, now we're getting to one of the coolest modules in the system, the sequential voltage generator. On its face, it's a pretty straightforward step sequencer with five steps, which is perfect for your Dave Brubeck synth cover band. You can use the sequencer to generate pitches for oscillators, of course, but it can also be used as yet another modulation source. So let's patch it around and see what happens. So for this first patch, we're doing something pretty simple. Well, I've sent out the sequencer to control the pitch of the complex oscillator, and you can hear that here. Use it to cycle through the pitch. And then, of course, if you remember, the pulser is controlling the rate of this, so if we vary the period of the pulser, it's going to change the rate of the sequencer. What's cool, too, is you can turn some of these switches off. Kind of fiddle around with the knobs until you get something fun, and it'll start skipping steps for you. All right, let's try another one. For the second example, I've routed the output from the sequencer to the input of the timbre control on the complex oscillator. So let's turn that up and hear how it sounds. And I'll play around a little bit too. And by pure chance, I just accidentally played Fanfare for the Common Man. So there you go, copyright strike. So the last module that I wanna highlight is the random voltage generator. From what I've read, the random voltage generator on the easel command is not exactly like the sample and hole modules I'm familiar with. I tried to track down more info about it, but it does what it says. It produces random voltages, which can be routed to any control input. And each random voltage output, which are the white jacks here, seem to have a slightly different character. So let's check that out. So let's hear the effect of the random voltage generator on the timbre control. I got a sequence running, we'll turn that up. And then we'll use our jumper bar here to patch it. That is pretty dystopian. So who is the Buchla easel command for? At roughly $3,000, I would say it's not for the casual knob twiddler. It's definitely a bucket list synth for professionals and serious hobbyists. But for that price, you're getting a gorgeous monophonic synth with glassy highs, a big punchy low end, and the infinite possibilities afforded by its modular design. 
Based on the easel command's reputation for experimental sounds, which you heard here, I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to easily create the kinds of 80s synth-pop style patches that I gravitate to, but it really wasn't a problem. The easel command can appear super complex at first blush, but if you have a solid understanding of synthesis, you'll be able to wrap your head around it quickly, even if you've never explored West Coast synthesis before. And the easel command imparts a certain intangible magic to even bread and butter synth sounds. For me, the Buchla easel command is the kind of instrument you build a relationship with. I just got to take it on a couple of dates, but I could see myself settling down with this synth, and like any good partner, it has depths to explore. In fact, my other synths were looking a little jealous when I had it at the house. All right, synth lovers, that's it for me. What are your thoughts on the Buchla easel command or West Coast synthesis in general? Does synthpop do it justice, or did I just run to the grocery store in a Formula One race car? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you like this video, let us know by giving us a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more Sweetwater Synth content, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and you will get notified anytime fresh content drops. I'm Jake Jenkins, and this is the Buchla Easel Command.